Welcome back to the Gift Up Podcast. Let's get to the Week 2 Vegas spread picks. I know it's a little bit early, but I'm not going to be home during the week to get these picks up, so I have to get them up now. And I'm kind of glad that I am because there's a lot of favorable matchups that stand out to me. There's actually eight games that I really like this week coming up. So let's start with the Giants plus 5.5 versus Washington. I think that's just too many points. I know Washington has that really good defense, and we're anticipating them to physically manhandle the Giants in this game, but I don't think that's going to happen. Again, I know the Giants have some injury issues and things like that, but I don't think Washington is going to be able to establish themselves offensively consistently throughout this year. They don't have a lot to throw the football to. They don't have a really good offensive line. And on paper right now, it's looking like they have a bottom five offensive line in the NFL. So if you're telling me that Washington isn't going to be able to run away with this game offensively and you're going to keep giving the ball back to Daniel Jones, who's a better quarterback than Ryan Fitzpatrick, I'm taking the Giants. They have more weapons offensively than Washington does, too. Again, I know people love Ryan Fitzpatrick. He overachieves, but he doesn't really have a good supporting cast on offense right now in Washington, and I think it hurts them. Next game, Raiders plus 5.5 versus Steelers. I got the Raiders to cover, Steelers to win. Certainly the Steelers can put up some points in this game, but I don't see any reason why the Raiders can't put up points as well. And – Look, I know the Steelers' defense has T.J. Watt. I know that they've played pretty good recently in recent years, but I don't know. I I just feel like the Steelers' defense isn't very deep. And Derek Carr, you know, if they can double T.J. Watt, Derek Carr has time, they're going to put up points too. So for me, five and a half is way too much to give the Raiders in that game. I like that one. The next game I'm going to make a money pick, 49ers minus four versus the Eagles. I thought the spread was going to be higher than this. Look, the Eagles offense, certainly I'm a little bit afraid of them. Jalen Hurts with that physical offensive line, healthy right now. Uh, They get play action going with the players they got at receiver like Devonta Smith. Yes, they can be dangerous, but I don't trust that Philly defense. And the 49ers, as long as they're healthy, getting that run game going, we know Shanahan is an expert play caller, getting Jimmy G comfortable with play action. I think that they're going to offensively run away with this game. I like that. Next up, Texans plus 13 versus the Browns. Uh, Obviously, the Browns are going to win that game, but I have the Texans to cover. It's just too many points. Uh, If the Texans can establish a little bit of a run game, get Tyrod Taylor a little bit comfortable, I think they can stay within two scores. Uh, But that's one just to stay away from because, look, the Texans, they have so many problems, and the Browns, they're, to me, a top-five team in the league talent-wise. So really, to me, it's just too many points, but – I would stay away from it because the Texans have too many flaws. Browns could potentially blow them out. Next game, our second money pick, Broncos minus two and a half versus the Jags. How the hell is Trevor Lawrence going to move the football in this game against that Broncos defense that stacked from top to bottom? And also, with what the Broncos have on the offensive line and what they have at running back, I don't see any reason why the Broncos aren't going to be able to pound the crap out of that weak Jags front seven. Get Teddy Bridgewater comfortable. He's not going to have to do a lot in that game. Trevor Lawrence, a rookie going against that defense, to me, that's a give me. Only two and a half. I thought it was going to be five points or more. Next game, our third money pick, Saints minus one and a half versus the Panthers. I got the Saints to win and cover. I know the Panthers have done a lot this offseason. They are a better football team. But the bottom line is, is that Sean Payton is still an incredibly good coach. Jameis Winston can air it out. They're going to get the run game going, the play action going with Elvin Kamara, and they're going to get comfortable offensively. And defensively, they're pretty damn good too. Outside of, you know, if there's major injuries, like if Lattimore or somebody can't go, then okay, I would maybe suggest staying away from it. But if the Saints are fully healthy, ready to go, and they're only minus a half against the Panthers, I'm taking the Saints. They're about, to me, they're a better football team, even so with the offseason transition that they went through. Next game, Rams minus three versus the Colts. I got the Rams to win and cover. That Colts secondary worries me very heavily. The Rams are stacked at receiver right now. They, To me, even though they have the injury to Akers, I think they're still going to be okay at running back. I think they made the necessary moves there. Uh, Sony Michel, I think he's going to step up for them. And Henderson will be good too. They get Stafford comfortable with McVay's expert play calling. They take advantage of that Colts defense. Should be no issues. The Colts, as we know, love to run the football first. They don't have a lot to throw to at receiver. 
and you've got Aaron Donald, who's a mammoth up front. I think they slow down Jonathan Taylor, and the Rams run away with that game offensively. Next game, our fourth money pick, and this, this to me is the top money pick of the second week. Put your high beams on, uh, you know, the flashing stars in the sky. If you can make a bet on this right now, go do it. Because to me, it doesn't get any easier than this. This is the top money pick this week. Bills minus two and a half versus the Dolphins. I don't understand that at all. How are the Bills only how are the Bills minus six and a half this week against Pittsburgh, but they're only minus two and a half against the Dolphins? The Bills are going to beat the Dolphins by more than a field goal. So, I mean, remember how badly they beat the Dolphins at the end of last year? The Dolphins have gotten better, but I don't think they've gotten like a thousand times better. That's easy. That That's a give me. Next game, Patriots minus three and a half versus the Jets. I got the Patriots to win and cover. Bill Belichick is going to have a defensive scheme in place. He is going to outcoach Robert Sala, and the Patriots are going to win this football game against the Jets. And they're going to win it methodically. Okay, offensively, this is not a game where Matt Jones is going to have a ton of pressure on his shoulders. The Jets don't have a pass rush. Carl Lawson out for the season. So Matt Jones with a comfort level, they're going to be able to get the run game established with Ramondre Stevenson. Patriots win and cover that game. I actually really like that one too. That that point spread's probably going to go up as the week goes on. So I like that. Uh, next game. Uh, another money pick, Bengals plus four versus the Bears. For me, the Bears' offense is going to be very stagnant this year. I don't see how they're going to score a ton of points. Defensively, they're still weak in the secondary. The Bengals have a lot of weapons at receiver. they got Joe Mixon coming out of the backfield. As that game goes on, Joe Burrow gets a little bit more comfortable with the four points. I like it. Next game, Falcons plus 10.5 versus the Bucks. I have the Falcons... To cover, Bucks to win. If this was a little bit lower of a point spread, I would go Bucks to win and cover. Like if this was seven, seven and a half, I would take the Bucks. But because it's so many points, and we saw how that Bucks secondary looks, and, and the Falcons do have a good offensive line, so they keep Shaq Barrett and company off of Matt Ryan. I think they can keep it within ten and a half. Next game, another money pick, Vikings plus two and a half versus the Cardinals. Look, guys, I'm just not liking the Cardinals this year. Like I said, offensively, I mean, we don't know what A.J. Green's going to look like. To me, the only for sure thing they have on offense is DeAndre Hopkins. So if you can take him out of the equation, you've won half the battle right there against the Cardinals. And then the Cardinals in that front seven, they're not strong enough. The Vikings have Delvin Cook. There is absolutely no reason why Kirk Cousins isn't going to be able to get comfortable in this game, get that rock running, play action, down the field to Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson, Vikings win and cover. Next game, another money pick, and I know it's tough betting against Seattle at home. Russell Wilson is a baller, but I have the Titans plus three and a half to win and cover that game. That Seattle defense is very, very, very weak in the front seven, and you have Derrick Henry, the king, who is going to be coming like a freight train against them. And Seattle's weak in the secondary as well. They've been shuffling guys at the corner position all the way up until this past uh, this past Friday in practice. They don't know what they have at corner right now. And you got A.J. Brown and Julio Jones on the outside on top of uh, Henry in the backfield. Give me the Titans with that three and a half. I thought it was going to be Titans minus two. They want to give me points with those guys. I'm going to take it. Plus, uh, The Titans are more physical in the front seven than they were last year. They added some good pieces. Chris Carson isn't going to be able to get going easy in that game, and Russell Wilson is going to be under a little pressure. We got three more on the docket, guys. One more money pick left after the next pick. So the next one, Cowboys plus three versus the Chargers. I have the Cowboys to cover, Chargers to win. With this game, we saw the Cowboys defense struggle. We did particularly in the secondary. It was an issue. I thought they were going to be a little bit better than that. I know they went against a great Tom Brady in that offense, but they're going up against Justin Herbert, who broke the rookie record for touchdown passes last year. He has more weapons to work with. Everybody's fully healthy, ready to go. They have an improved offensive line. The Chargers are going to be able to put up some points in this game, and the Chargers also have a better defense, in my opinion, than the Dallas Cowboys do. So to me, the Chargers are going to win this game. 
But I think Dak and company, who also uh, the Cowboys have a lot of weapons, but they also have a good offensive line. Uh, Zach Martin should be back next week. Um, and they should be able to get the rock going a little bit more with Zeke Elliott. I think that hurt them in the Bucks game. I think they should have fed Zeke a little bit more because it was working when they gave it to him. And I think that would have helped kill clock and keep Brady on the sideline while still having efficient drives. So I think the Cowboys are able to keep this really close because they're going to focus on the run game a little bit more, keep the Chargers offense on the sideline. But the bottom line is when the Chargers are on the field, I think they're going to score. So Cowboys cover, Chargers win. Next game, money pick. Chiefs are only minus two and a half versus the Ravens. Now, I respect the Ravens. I do. But if the Chiefs are going to win this game, it's going to be by a field goal or a little bit more. And I think the Ravens defense, you can take advantage of it. I don't think that Pat Mahomes is going to be under a ton of pressure, especially with the way they revamped that offensive line. And then defensively for the Chiefs, they're ready to go. That front seven is looking good. The addition of Jaron Reed up front with Frank Clark, uh, you know, you got, and also um, in the interior, that defensive line, we know they're damn good as well. I don't think the Ravens are going to be able to establish the read option like they want to. I really don't. Uh, Spagnolo is one of the better defensive coordinators in the league. The Ravens don't have a ton of weapons at receiver. It's just, to me, it's just too easy to figure out if you're an opposing defense. And the Chiefs have all the tools. They got better in the trenches this offseason. Only minus two and a half. That's our final money pick. A lot of money picks this week, guys. But these early spreads are giving us something to work with. And we're going to cap it off with the Lions plus 11 and a half versus the Packers. I have the Lions to cover, Packers to win. It's just too many points for me. I thought it was probably going to be around the nine-point area. Uh, Eleven and a half is a lot. I don't really respect the Lions this year. But that Packers defense, you know, I, it's okay. It's all right. But I think you can put up some points against it. And if Jared Goff isn't under pressure throughout this whole game, I think they can keep it within 11 and a half. They're not going to win the game, uh, but they can keep it within that point range. Uh, but they're not They're not taking out Aaron the game Rodgers at home. So with that – Guys, that's our week two spreads. Like I said, a lot of money picks, but doing them early sometimes helps out. But like I said, do your homework during the week. If there's injuries and stuff, and I made a, a money pick, but there's like a significant injury, use your head, okay? Uh, you know, try to be careful with that. But other than that, pounce on some of these ones, like I said. Um, Broncos only minus two and a half versus the Jags. Bills only minus two and a half against the Finns. Uh, you know, even that Titans plus three and a half at Seattle. KC only minus two and a half versus the Ravens. Those are some give me's, I think. A little bit too easy. Uh, So with that, guys, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe. More videos are coming today.